Hello everyone, it's Noah here, and today we're back with Marinces. With Pronomias finally released the Marinces support, and this deck is what we're looking at today. I'm just really excited to show off this deck to you. What Marinces is aiming to do is to turbo out an unaffected boss monster that will also have a spell trap negate. As well as something like a toad with an omni negate, have Marinces wave in hand as a monster negate and also make sure all your monsters unaffected, and potentially also add a sleeping maiden to make sure that your field spell cannot be destroyed by card effects, and giving you the ultimate field. Although we can roam up pretty easily, we are also pretty heavy on hand traps to stop our opponents as well. 3 Maxi, 3 Ash, Anibiru, and 3 Imperm are pretty classic. But we also don't want to get hand trapped, so Cold by the Grave and Corset Designator is pretty necessary. The weakest part of its deck is when its first start, the first normal summon, is probably the weakest part. And once you get a few monsters in the field and graveyard, you really get growing. You have silent money to find the normal summons. And the best normal summon is of course Princess Blue Tank, which will Foolish Burial on summon, and when it's linked off, you can also extra wait to you to add one if one of them is Princess. You can use Pastralus to a double normal summon, and after you do, you can send Seahorse or Springdroll to the graveyard to add back to your hand with Blue Sludge, so you can use their effect to special summon from hand. After Blue Sludge, you want to special summon Sea Angel to get the field spell to your hand, which is essential for your combos. You can then link them off to a link 2, which is Troll Anomaly, bringing back one of your monsters. If you don't have the trap card yet, you can link 3, discard the water to add the trap to your hand, and then ultimately you'll make Crystal Heart and then with it you'll make the Acro Argonaut which will make it unaffected by card effects because of your field spell and it will be a spell trap negate. Do try to incorporate Sleeping Maiden into your combo as well, maybe find a way to add it to your hand so you can protect your field spell. And if you find yourself with two level 4s at the end of your combo, you can also make Bahamut Shark to make totally awesome. Stealth Trident is also an option depending on what you're playing against. Another new card I should mention is Abyss Shark, which is a free special if you control the water and also adds you Silent Endler, which is also a free special, but you have to special summon this last because it does lock you out. Splash Mage is an alternate extender and Marinsa's Great Bubble Reef is an alternate boss monster. If you don't have the field spell, Acro Ardonaut doesn't do anything, so you might as well go into Great Bubble Reef. So with that, let's get into the games. The combos can be pretty long sometimes, but try to stay alone, and I'll teach you how to play Marinces. This is a game where I went full combo, so I'll set with Silent Mining to get my normal summon in the hand, which is the best one, Marinces Blue Tank. On Marinces Blue Tank summon, I will send Springdrill to the day ride, and then link it off to make a blue slug. On summons of blue slug, it will add Springdrill back to my hand, and when blue tank is linked off, it will extravate 3 and add 1 Marinces from my deck to my hand. We were pretty lucky and we extravated Seahorse, so we're going to add that to hand as a spree special and Blue Sight will hand Spring Girl, which is another free special. We will special summon the Seahorse and then link that up into a Sea Angel. The Angel will add the field spell to our hand so we can actually do our combo. Now we can link these two up into a Coral Anomaly. Coral Anomaly's effect allows us to get back a Marine Set from the graveyard so we'll just get back Blue Tank. Then we'll activate the field spell in order to be able to activate Marinces Dive to special summon a Marinces from our deck. I want to get the Sleeping Maiden into rotation, so I chose that. With it, we'll link up into Crystal Heart, because we need Crystal Heart to be able to go on to our Link 4. So we'll link Crystal Heart and Coil Anomaly together into the new boss monster, Aqua Ardenaut. This will trigger the field spell, equipping 3 Link Monsters from the graveyard to our monster, and also till the Coil Anomaly since it's sent to the graveyard. So we can add Sleepy Maiden back to our hands, so then we can use it. We'll activate the Sleepy Maiden to protect the field spell. We'll activate the Spring Girl to special summon it by banishing the Marine Set. And then we'll find a special summon Silent Angler, so we can HT summon both of them into a Bahamut Shark. Bahamut Shark's effects allows us to detach one to summon totally awesome from our extra deck, which is also going to be an Omni Nedate. With Wave in hand, a totally awesome on board, and an Acro Ardonaut equipped with 3 monsters and Sleepy made of protecting the field spell, I'm feeling pretty good. They are playing Infer Noble Knight, so they are just trying to start their, some of their monsters and activate their troop spells. Now I will try to negate Infer Noble Knight's Durandal, but what I do not realize is that Durandal is not a once per turn, so they can just activate it again I guess. 
It's fine though. We kinda lost on a deck there for no reason, but we can play through it. They're going to death Randall back, and I will not allow it. They already got so many advantages of that, so we're just going to mercy us wave out of it. And that will make all of our face up monsters unaffected for the rest of the turn, which is a crazy effect. They are going to link into Roland and an activate Roland's effects. I don't really see any of them are being particularly strong, so I'll just let that go. I'm waiting for Exalt here, and it turns out their last card in hand is a Stalfall, which is really good for them, because now they will be able to link 2 into Exalt. Using the Eclipse spells, they will chain block their Exalt, which is pretty rough for me, but it doesn't really matter what they target to destroy with their field spell, because my whole board is unaffected by card effects. They'll add the Infernal Phoenix, but they will never be able to summon it, because next time they use Isolt, I will just negate that with Totally Awesome. Totally Awesome also has another effect, which allows us to return it to the extra deck, so I'm hoping that I will be able to summon it again with Bahamut Shark next turn, since they can only attack Ultra Argonaut, and I don't think they can run over it easily. They'll go into battle phase to realize that they can only attack a core Argonaut, and then so on. Overall, I just love Marincest. That is so much fun. It's kind of vulnerable at the start. If your first play doesn't go through, you can just end up having to pass your turn. But once you get going, it's really hard to stop. I really love all the interesting things it can do, whether it's the tower boss monster or going into totally awesome. Or even something like a Trident Control is possible with this deck, so I really love its potential. It's really just showing how good water monsters can be, and it's a perfect time to show off that water field spell as well. You might want to consider playing this deck in the upcoming Link Festival, as it is almost perfectly playable except for the HC's monsters. But although it does reduce its ceiling a little bit, this deck will perfectly function fine in there as well. Thank you so much for watching so far. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to subscribe, and as always, I'll see you in another video.